Good evening, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick from Grace Episcopal Church, and I'm sitting in my home. I hope you are too, or if you're on break, at maybe have, you're working a split shift, whatever it might be, it's good to be with you. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence on this 19th day of March, and as we commemorate the father, the earthly father of Jesus, Joseph. I'll tell you a little bit more about him in just a few moments, but let's put ourselves in God's holy presence as we wind down our day and take a pause in it and to invite him into our lives. We are on page 127 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 127. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all of our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is a portion of Psalm 89. Psalm 89. We're reading verses 1 through 8 this evening and reflecting on them. On page 713 in your Book of Common Prayer, also found in your Holy Scriptures, wherever that you might be, let us read together and meditate on these beautiful words, Psalm 89, verses 1 through 8. Your love, O Lord, forever I will sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firm in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. The heavens bear witness to your wonders, O Lord, and to your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who is the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the gods? God is much to be feared in the counsel of the Holy Ones, great and terrible to all those round about him. Who is like you, O Lord God of hosts? O mighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures continue. As we reflect on a passage from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child and from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he was resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. 
which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took, his, took, took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he was named Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Isn't that a beautiful passage from Matthew's Gospel? I, it really is one of the only very few places that we do hear anything about Joseph uh, in Scripture. We believe that from um, some uh, a writing back in uh, around the year 100 when Justin Martyr uh, wrote about um, a carpenter from uh, Nazareth who made a couple of some uh, ox yokes and some uh, plows uh, for farmers in that area that had not uh, been disintegrated or uh, been uh, broken in any way. Now, this is legend, uh, but this is really one of the few things we have in writing a first-hand account of somebody who possibly knew of the carpenter from Nazareth or from from Nazareth. And so we believe Joseph, uh, because of he was only mentioned in Luke's gospel, uh, John's gospel, and Matthew. Mark has nothing about Joseph, and which doesn't surprise anybody really in some ways. Uh, but these three other gospel writers uh, must have had some form of firsthand contact, probably with most likely the disciples, uh, and knew a little bit about uh, Jesus. But what we know is that in the Greek uh, Gospels, they, they named uh, Joseph as, uh, they referred to him as the tecton, uh, which means builder or architect. And so uh, we know that uh, most likely Joseph was an amazing dad uh, and probably helped raise Jesus uh, from all accounts uh, from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 41 through 51. We, we know that he raised Jesus till about uh, the time that we know of, probably until about the age of 12, most likely. Then we start listening as he gets older, uh, but Joseph is left out of the picture. But most likely, between that and the time of Jesus' crucifixion and his ministry in his 30s, uh, Joseph was a, a man who made a huge impression on his earthly life. Because he speaks, you know, when Jesus speaks about uh, God the Father as a loving God, we can only imagine that he probably had uh, Joseph to look to as an example of that type of man that he, uh, he can speak of, of his uh, uh, heavenly Father. And so we celebrate Joseph today, and I, I, I always looked up to Joseph as a man, as a person of holiness that I would try to aspire to as a dad. And certainly uh, in my ministry as well. I'm certainly not the greatest of carpenters. Um, I was with Father Nick Yeager today and we were reflecting on carpentry a little bit. And uh, he gave me some wonderful imagery of the crosses he made at Grace Episcopal Church where I'm the rector there and places else uh, at uh, Camp All Saints as well. But when we listen to this passage of Matthew as we go to bed tonight, I can't help but help us all think about uh, how he was a wondrous, righteous man who did the work of the Holy Spirit. He didn't cast Mary out, but he drew upon the guidance of the Holy Spirit to do what was right and to support Mary and to raise that son uh, that she had as his own. That, my friends, is something we can sleep with as an as inspiration for all of us. And I hope you can, too, as you possibly reflect on this passage, chapter 1, verse 18 through 25 of Matthew's Gospel. Amen. We continue our Compline Night Prayers now. Let us turn to page 132, page 132. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord of God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
And together, my brothers and sisters, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. We use the traditional Lord's Prayer this evening on the left column. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. This is our colic prayer for this day. O God, who from the family of your servant David raised up Joseph to be the guardian of your incarnate son and the spouse of his virgin mother, give us grace to imitate his uprightness of life and his obedience to your commands. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And together now, my sisters and brothers, let us turn to page 389, page 389, Prayers of the People, Form 5, Prayers of the People, Form 5, page 389. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For your holy church of God, that it may be fulfilled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, for Terry White, our bishop of Kentucky, and your bishop wherever you might be, or your superior, for all bishops and other ministers, and all for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all who all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and all peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, especially Joseph Biden, our president, for all of our elected officials, for our local government, for George Bray, our mayor, and for your local officials, that they may serve just with that they may serve with justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for the, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation of Grace Episcopal Church, for your congregation, wherever you worship, for those who are present and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families and friends and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. For all those we pray for this evening, I'd like to especially pray this evening for all those who celebrated a birthday this week, especially today for Ramsey Collins, who celebrates his birthday. Happy birthday, Ramsey. We pray for Blaine, Blaine Hebert, for Lisa Flannery, Bennett Wilkie, Dee Sams, Savannah Bechtel, and Fowler Black this past weekend. We pray for all of these wonderful people, especially for Ramsey, 
And as he uh, continues with uh, finishing high school, we give thanks, O Lord, for all those who are very special and dear to us. We lift them up and we pray for our first responders, our police officers and fire people. We pray for all of our doctors and nurses, counselors and therapists, for those who do physical therapy and those who work with others, our eye doctors and dentists. We give thanks for all of them. We pray for the 700 people for, who uh, received, who uh, contracted COVID-19 today and for the 15 people here in our county of McCracken County. We pray especially for Reverend Nick Yeager, for Reverend John Allen. We pray for Lisa, Lisa, Lori Copeland. We pray for Dick Roberts and for Darlene Pigford and Blaine Heber, who all who are sick at this time, especially for Darlene and Dick Roberts and for Reverend Nick Yeager. We pray for all of them who are in the hospital at this time. And for one reason or another, we ask you to be with them, especially those uh, as they come out of surgery at this time. I pray for Lori Copeland, who is recovering. We pray for Charles Turok, who's on hospice. Uh, for Nancy Fowler Black, for Liz Story, for Jimmy, my neighbor Faye, for my nephew John, for my dad Delbert, for Fane, for my wife Susie. We pray for all those who are battling cancer, especially for Patty and Phil, Sam, Wittis. We pray for Tom, Kelly Curtis Walker, for Dorothy, Reverend Dorothy Hartzog, Reverend Libby Wade, for my sister-in-law Sherry Ulick, and, and Jim Zelmer. And we pray for all their family members and caregivers at this time. We lift them up, O Lord Christ, and ask your prayers for all of them and those who are at Rivercrest, Gaither Suites, and the Lakes, and all those who are caretakers for those who are in nursing facilities. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints we they may have the rest, that in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We especially pray for the 25 people who died today, especially three of them that were here in McCracken County, and for their families and their loved ones. We pray for Ray Piera, who lost his bride, uh, Joanne, this week. We pray and ask you to be with him and welcome Joanne's soul and these 25 other souls and all those who are dear to us that we free, free remember this day and also cherish. We lift them up and we pause for a moment to remember them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, for Joseph, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves to one another and all our life to Christ our Lord, to you, Lord, and all our God. Yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. We turn back now to page 134, at the bottom of page 134. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised, for these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And before I give the final blessing, I also would like to remember uh, the women uh, who were unfortunately in Georgia that were murdered this week. And for all women, as we remember uh, Women's History Month this month, and for the preciousness of their lives and the dignity that they deserve, we remember these six women and the other two women 
and uh, who passed away because of a terrible murder. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I hope you have a wonderful and restful sleep tonight and enjoy a wonderful weekend as well as about to uh, be with us. Uh, please join us on Sunday at 10 a.m. for services virtually. We'll be online. We've been working out a few bugs uh, with Facebook, uh, with our new system and with Facebook. And so uh, we hope to be up and running on time at 10 a.m. Or if you can join us in person, that would be wonderful too. We also have the 8 a.m. service if you'd like to have a quiet, reflective service as well with Right One. Have a wonderful afternoon. Remember that God loves each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining me. And have a wonderful and restful sleep. Sweet dreams.